Not easy to follow, Peter. I'm Vida Samian. I served as Dean of the College of Arts and Humanities from 2004 to 2014 and worked with Phil more closely in the last few years when he was appointed U.S. Poet Laureate. We know that Phil was not a fan of administrators. <laughs> Fortunately for me, he had softened up and was generous in accepting my friendship. The first time I met Phil Levine was on the occasion of his retirement at the annual banquet of the college. Phil talked about what teaching meant to him. A reciprocal and in some way organic interaction between student and teacher, which goes beyond the boundaries of the classroom, transcending the dimensions of space and time. A sort of suspended and continuing connection beyond all boundaries, as if floating in space and timelessness. The image resonated and hung in my memory, but I only fully understood its meaning years later as I observed Phil with his former students, like today, when we ce celebrated his appointment as U.S. Po Poet Laureate. Over the years, Phil was very generous with his time and teaching. He offered workshops for the MFA students and participated in summer arts. He remained actively involved in an inclusive way as a mentor to the Fresno Poets Association and the community of Fresno writers. Phil's death leaves an irreplaceable void but he will live through his words for all of us and for those who know his work. Let me share two ways that Phil will continue to live at the university in the MFA program. The first is the Philip Levine Poetry Book Prize, which was established in 2001 through the efforts of Connie Hales and other colleagues in the program. The Levine Book Prize has become a very successful national book contest, attracting hundreds of entries. This year, we received a record-breaking 945 full-length book manuscript. The MFA program runs the contest as part of a graduate course, giving students hands-on training and experience in the world of publishing and editing. The contest has just named its 13th winner, uh, judged by Chuck Hanslicek. The winner receives a 2000 prize and the winning book is published by Ahinga Press. The second is the Philip Levine Scholarship that the MFA program established in his name and is awarded to one student each year. But no endowment had been established to generate the scholarship annually which brings me to the story I want to share with you. During the last few years, in celebration of Phil's appointment as U.S. Poet Laureate, we held a number of events and decided to do a special edition of a wine at the University Winery. I'm sure you all tasted that wine. <laughs> Phil was very generous with his time. He and Franny met with the graphic design students with Peter's help, Phil blended and selected the wine, and it indeed became the most popular wine. It is sold out now. There were two festschrifts published with essays and poems from former students and friends, both testimony to Phil's connection with his students. One of them, First Light, edited by Christopher Buckley, was published collaboratively with the press at CSUF, at Fre uh, Fresno State. The press is housed in the College of Arts and Humanities. Phil kindly agreed for us to use the proceeds from the wine and the festschrift to build the Phil Levine Scholarship Endowment. But we still had not reached endowment level. 
In 2013, I asked Phil for yet another favor. If he would be willing to do a summer workshop for the MFA students. And he agreed with the concept. Of course, some of our faculty wanted to attend the workshop as well. But Phil said, no, the student experience will not be the same with faculty in attendance. This was the last workshop that Phil offered. So let me close with Phil's words by sharing two emails that Phil sent me as he conceptualized the workshop. I think these emails reveal Phil's approach and commitment to teaching and students. On January 26, 2013, he wrote, Dear Vida, having given our proposal some thought, I have decided to do something else, something I have not done before and not what I have done so many times. I will mull this over in my mind and as soon as I have decided, I will let you know. It won't take long. Yes, I do want to do something to be useful, but teaching what I so often taught has little appeal to, for me. I will be in touch shortly. Then on February 4th, he wrote, Dear Vida, for this coming summer, I have designed a course that I believe I would enjoy. There would be no fees for the students, as well as no credits or grading. In fact, it would not be a course. It would be made up entirely of three conversations on a single book which the 15 students, if we can call them students, would all read. There would be three meetings of an hour or more each. I will receive no stipend. Instead, the School of Arts and Humanities could contribute what it can afford to the scholarship that bears my name. The book I've chosen for this offering is Now All Roads Lead to France by Matthew Hollis. It deals with the last five years of the life of the English poet Edward Thomas. He died at age 39 in World War I. His mentor was the American poet Robert Frost. The book deals cogently with several significant themes, friendship, mentoring, marriage, the life of the artist, patriotism, love, war, and more. I hope this will please you. Well, the scholarship did reach endowment level. This year's recipient is Angela Corbett as our Phil Levine Fellow in the MFA program. We are grateful to Phil and Franny for making this possible. Thank you. Joe Diaz couldn't make it, and I will attempt to fill in his place. I'd like to speak to you about a very special event that is happening at Fresno State. It's the Phil Levine Reading Room at the library, second floor. It overlooks the Peas Garden. It's very fitting for, for him. And it, this is due in part um, to the generosity of our provost, Lance Lesney to whom we went at the beginning with the idea. And it started with generosity, really, the generosity of Fran Levine, who was willing to donate to Fresno State, not to New York, not to anywhere else, but to Fresno State, over 2,000 books of Phil Levine, annotated books, where the essence of Phil can be found, where the spirit of Phil's thoughts are throughout, and also, where you, you as a community member, where you as a student, you as a professor at Fresno State can go and just explore and just write. It's a room of our own, to quote Virginia Woolf. A room in which poetry can be created, in which dialogue can be established, and in which we can discuss the humanity that binds us, the beauty of our valley, that incredible notion that Phil uh, left with us, the legacy 
of a sense of our own, of who we are. Fresno, that's an incredible thought. He actually made us aware that we live in a good city. We live in a good valley, a valley that feeds the world, a valley of hardworking people. In the summer, it's really hot, and sometimes you feel a little bit of the air that has the salt. Do you remember that poem? It's that valley, it's that notion of being that he left with us. And it is that legacy of Phil Levine that is going to be in this shrine to go back to David. It is a shrine, but it's a living shrine. It is not a stagnant sort of space. It is dynamic, it is full of life. It is a space in which future generations will go and discover Phil and then they themselves will create their own poetry. They themselves will be inspired by our valley, our workers, our fruit, our university. So this space is thanks to, again, the generosity of Fran Levine, the generosity and vision of our provost, Lanessa Lesney, Debbie A. Stone as well, Peter McDonald, the dean of the library, and you will see right now the rendition of the space uh, made by Imelda Golik. You see his... <laughs> you see the photograph in the backdrop. It'll have some of his personal objects and it'll have all of his library on the side, the chairs. It's a living, again, space for us to enjoy. The creation and permanency of the Phil Levine Reading Room is all through private support. And it'll be located on the second floor overlooking, again, the, the, our beautiful uh, Peas Garden. This will be then the legacy that we have here at Fresno State it is a treasure for us, and it is a treasure for you. It is a treasure for the community as well. Thank you for coming. Please stay around. Uh, we have one last performance, which I think it will be an incredible fitting tribute to Phil Levine. And after uh, the performance, please join us in the adjacent room to drink and eat and laugh and remember Phil Levine.